All right, Ken, thank you very much. Well, a big moment in a Knoxville courtroom, a case we've been following for nearly five years. Now the mom convicted in connection with the death of her five-year-old daughter is headed to prison. Robin Howington getting a 22-year sentence. We brought it to you as breaking news at midday. A pained expression taking over Howington's face just after noon as Judge Scott Green shared his decision. Green finding at least two factors to enhance Howington's punishment that she had a criminal history and she tried to cover up the truth about what happened. But I really don't know how you could have um, made this much worse than what you did that night. Within literally minutes uh, of when your daughter had been shot and killed, you were attempting to hide the firearm that was used to kill her. Uh, you made up story after story after story, and this court can consider every bit of that as criminal conduct. Judge Green noting that Howington's story changed in the hours after the September 2019 shooting at her Fountain City home from the original 911 call claiming that a stranger shot her child. Also, the judge noted that Howington tried to destroy her cell phone as police launched their investigation. You may remember Howington took the stand in her own defense during last month's trial. A crime alert next on our Big 7 list for you. Sheriff's deputies hope someone has information as they figure out who fired shots at a West Knox County apartment complex. Shooting happening off Pellissippi Parkway at a complex called the Preserve at Hardin Valley. Deputies say suspects exchanged gunfire, probably in a breezeway, and were told bullets hit at least one apartment. The sheriff's office does not know of any victims, at least not so far, and the suspects had left the scene. They're asking anyone who was in the area of the preserve at Hardin Valley between 3 and 3.45 this afternoon and saw something suspicious to please give them a call. The number is 865-215-2243. Another step in a big criminal case we're following for you. Three of the four people indicted in connection with what police describe as a heinous murder were all in court together for the first time. Latowan Osborne, Marquise Ellis, and Edward Wilson all face charges including first degree murder and kidnapping. This morning, the three asked for court appointed attorneys. The judge agreed that they qualified. Our crew in the courtroom also learned that prosecutors are still deciding whether they want to pursue the death penalty or life without parole. A prosecutor is telling the court they are waiting for a final autopsy report before making that call. With that in mind, the judge said that he would wait until their decision is made before setting a trial date. The next court date, by the way, is set for June 21st. Osborne, Ellis, and Wilson were indicted in connection with the murder of Danishka Mejia, found dead at a home on Gilbert Drive in South Knoxville. Now, police said Mejia reported being the victim of a sexual assault just hours before she was killed and allegedly named Osborne as the suspect. The three were indicted along with Osborne's mother, Angela Greenberg, who is accused of accessory after the fact and tampering with evidence. Of course, we'll stay with this case as it moves through the court. And we're following the investigation into a death behind bars. Tennessee Bureau of Investigation called in to find out what happened leading up to the death at the Campbell County Jail. Now we're told inmate Gary Wayne Burris, age 47, died this morning. Again, while he was inside the Campbell County Jail. Now we will continue to update you as we work to learn more. And some new uncertainty in the effort to get Knox County's growth plan across the finish line tonight. Knox County Mayor Glenn Jacobs is urging county commissioners not to push for amendments. Commissioners meeting to discuss the future of the comprehensive land use plan, a portion of the larger Knoxville growth plan called Vance Knox. Now this follow up meeting comes after members of commission asked to make amendments to the plan before voting on it Monday, which would be the last step before the plan would be enacted. Mayor Jacobs releasing a statement asking commission to pass the plan as it is presented to them. He mentioned it during his weekly video message posted on YouTube. Obviously, I respect county commission's role in this process, and they are free to do whatever they choose. At the same time, it's pretty late in the game to make wholesale changes, especially when all of us have worked together to produce what we have now. I'd also like to remind everyone that I have to be comfortable with the plan, and ultimately, I can approve it or reject it. I certainly hope that after all this time and effort, we can finalize this project and move forward. Now, also today, we spoke with County Commissioner Kim Frazier, who describes this as all just part of the legislative process. 
I know that there's been kind of this us versus them um, misinterpretation, and it, it's not that at all. Um, the mayor's office, the administration, the leadership team, from the very beginning, this has been a collaboration because we all want the same thing. We want good policy. East Tennessee Realtors Association released a statement on the proposed amendments to Knox County's Comprehensive Land Use and Transportation Plan, saying they support the plan proposed by Mayor Jacobs and are urging the county commission to approve it as is with no amendments. Now, the association says in part, quote, recently there have been multiple last minute requests for substantial amendments that would undermine this public planning process and override the recommendations of planning and engineering professionals. If implemented, these amendments risk making development less predictable and more expensive, further exacerbating the housing shortage, end quote. Next on our list for you, a big event promising big fun, also delivering big traffic slowdowns, as you can see. It's Rod Run Weekend in Pigeon Forge, classic cars, hot rods, show cars, and crowds of gearheads. Well, they're all turning out to see it all. Over the course of several decades, you know, a lot has changed with the car show, and those changes keep coming. Biggest of note, starting next year, no more car sales along the side of the parkway. The city of Pigeon Forge says the lease that once allowed that to happen is changing, and that clause will be removed. Have in place uh, is changing. We have a new sublease agreement for those businesses that has been approved by TDOT to uh, take out a clause that allows for sale of vehicles um, in that uh, subleased area. I think just the sheer volume of people that we have come through uh, Pigeon Forge during the car shows has grown significantly just throughout the year. Since the city manager Eric Brackens estimates between 100 and 150,000 people have come to Pigeon Forge for this week's rod run. With them, lots of important spending for the tourism industry. And if you don't need to drive through Pigeon Forge tonight or tomorrow, there's going to be some pretty intense traffic backups along the parkway, so you may just want to avoid the area. What you see behind me here, this is the TDOT map, and you can see the red, some of it deep red, along the parkway, Teaster Lane, 449. This is along the main stretch, though, that's really impacted. So, again, just watch out for that heavy traffic through tomorrow there along 321. Rossini Festival, it's here, as you can tell from the opera in the air at WDVX along Gay Street in downtown Knoxville, with singers tuning up this afternoon for what's now a two-day event. You might hear opera singers on our main stage and then see dancers at Clinch Avenue, or you might see a bluegrass band um, over at the South Market stage near Church Street. Um, you'll hear something else at Union Avenue. So everywhere you go, there's something new going on, um, and there's a little something for everybody. Rossini Festival is going on tomorrow and Sunday. WATE is a proud sponsor, and we'll have a tent set up at the festival, so stop by and say hello.